welcome back to the manufacturing automation course so let me remind you that last time what we have discussed and where we started discussing is the center board hopper feeder so this is also one of the feeders for feeding small engineering parts to the assembly machine that's what we said now here if you look at this diagram we have the hopper and uh, in the hopper we have the mass of parts and particularly this kind of a hopper is suitable for feeding cylindrical parts so through the mass of the part as we said that there is a blade which reciprocates it goes up and down and while going up and down through the mass of the part on the track of this blade the parts will be nested small parts will be nested and at the topmost position of the blade when the blade will be aligned to this uh, delivery chute then all the parts will be sliding to the chute and going to the assembly machine so this is a simple design and uh, the uh, basic thing to be designed here is the angle of uh, uh, the blade now here one thing that uh, we started discussing last time is that that when the blade will be coming from the uh, be position below to the top then it will in the halfway it will start first it will accelerate and somewhere in the middle it will start decelerating so there is a limit to the deceleration because if the if it is very high in that case the parts located on the blade will be thrown out that's one thing now for a certain deceleration therefore which will be optimal at uh, at uh, which value the parts will not be thrown out when the parts will be located on the blade particularly on the upper position of the blade then the angle of uh, inclination of the blade or the maximum angle of inclination of the bed, blade is an important factor because if the angle of inclination is uh, um, if the angle of inclination is more in that case what happens is that it will facilitate the parts to go down the track this is one thing but at the same time if the angle of inclination is very high in that case it will take more time for the reciprocation of the blade and so the production rate will be lower because the production uh, because the time taken will be higher and the rate always is one by the time that's what we discussed earlier also now uh, here an optimum value of track inclination angle exists and theoretically it can be shown to be function of only the dynamic coefficient of friction and rb by l so rb we said that this is the pivot radius and the l small l is the length of the track so the length of the track uh, in which the parts will be nested okay and of course the maximum number of parts which can be nested here will be defined by the small l divided by part length which is capital l okay all right now uh, here this diagram we started looking at last time so this is when that when the part is located at the uppermost position of the track and these are the forces which are acting this is the mass of the part okay and this is the reaction that is the normal force uh, imparted on the part and uh, this will be the this is the rb and the total length is the rb so the length of the part is capital l so therefore this length from here to here will be rb minus l by 2 if we consider that this point is located at the middle of the part let's say and this is the angle of inclination of the of the blade or of the track okay here now this is the position of the part when it is sliding down all right now while sliding down the forces acting will be the normal force n1 this in the free body diagram this is the linear acceleration a and mpg is the uh, ma mass of the part and here this is the force which will be the for friction force which is resisting the uh, acceleration of the part so uh, uh, here in fact uh, reaction between the track and the part to become zero for example so we say that the n1 has to be equal to zero so for n1 has to be zero let's write down the equation first that n1 
this is that n 1 actually, this is n 1, n 1 minus m p g cos theta m which is acting in this direction is equal to m p theta, uh, this is the acceleration, this is a Newton's law. So, m p theta 2 dot this is the acceleration into r b length r b minus l by 2, r b minus l by 2 is this length. All right. Now, this from this equation m p n is n 1 to be equal to 0. So, m p theta 2 dot r b minus l by 2 this has to be equal to minus m p g and the cos theta m. So, from here what we can find out is the acceleration. So, this acceleration will be g cos theta divided by r b okay, from this equation. Now, uh, now let us assume that for simplicity that during the period of the upward motion the of the blade, the drive to the blade is designed to give a constant acceleration and a constant deceleration. The values will be that we found out here and uh, this is the g cos theta divided by r b. So, what we are saying once again that when the blade is going from the lower position to the top, it will go at a constant acceleration and a constant deceleration the values of both acceleration and the deceleration will be g cos theta by r b. Now, under these conditions the total time t 1 taken to lift the blade, so that the track is inclined at an angle theta m. So, this theta m we said here, let us say this is the theta m. Okay. So, for that theta m to the horizontal this is given by t 1 square is equal to 4 r b theta m divided by g cos theta m. Okay. So, it is coming from actually if L is equal to half a t square. Okay. So, the t square is equal to 2 L divided by the acceleration. So, the L here is the r b. Okay. t square is equal to 2 L by a or here we can say that this is it can be also theta m. So, g cos theta m divided by r b this is the one that we have here as that acceleration or deceleration. So, therefore, t 1 square can be given by 4 r b theta m divided by g cos theta m. All right. So, this is coming from once again the theta m can be written as half of the a t square and the t square is 2 theta m in that case divided by acceleration. So, this is the acceleration is given here and we are taking the theta m here. So, the t square will be 4 r b theta m divided by g into cos theta m. So, it is now assumed that when the blade is in its highest position, it dwells for a time t 2. See earlier we decided that we, we have discussed that when the blade is going up, it will dwell for some times because all the parts need some time to slide. Now, this dwelling time it should be long enough to allow at least one part to go from the top position to the entire length of the blade and coming to the exit that is coming to the uh, to the delivery shoot. This is given in the worst case as it is written here by the time taken for one part to slide the whole length of the track. Okay. The forces acting on a part under these circumstances are given here. So, this we have seen. Okay. These are the forces which are given when the parts are uh, sliding down. This can be written as m p into the into the linear acceleration is equal to m p g sin theta m minus mu d m p g and the cos theta m. Okay. So, uh, this is given by from here you can see that this is the mu d m p g cos theta m and here it will be m p g and the sin theta m. So, the difference between them Okay, because these are two in the opposite directions, different directions. So, this is given by give equal to m p into the acceleration. So, this will be the equation when the uh, part is going down. That means, this is the force which is the friction force and this in this direction this will be the force which is m p g and the sin theta m. So, these two differences will be equal to m p into the acceleration which is that a here. Okay. So, from this all right. where this a is the linear acceleration as we said of the part down the track and mu d is the coefficient of dynamic friction between the part and the track. 
So, the minimum dwell period then T 2 from here you can find out that T 2 can be given uh, like the T 1 we have said. So, this will be the 2 L divided by the acceleration, the acceleration we could find out from here okay, that A is equal to M P is uh, getting cancelled from everywhere. So, this will be G and the sin theta m minus mu d and the cos theta m. This is the acceleration that we are getting. So, therefore, this value we can put this acceleration that will be 2 L divided by acceleration because that L is equal to half a t square again. So, the t square is equal to 2 the length and the um, a. So, the a in this case is this all right this is the acceleration and 2 into L is the L being the length of the track. Okay. So, therefore, we can find out that what is the dwell time of course, the dwell time T 2 this will be the whole thing to the power half that is root over this one. This is the uh, dwell time okay, T 2. We had the T 1 which is uh, the time taken for part to go up. All right. Now, for uh, simplicity we are saying that the time taken to return the blade to the lowest position from the up position is the same as the time taken for the blade to come from the uh, initial position to the top position, they are the same. So, therefore, the total time that will be taken will be equal to going up, going down. So, T 1 plus T 2 this is 2 T 1 plus the dwell time that it is stopping for sometimes for the parts to slide down the tracks. So, the total time will be 2 T 1 plus T 2 which is given by 2 into this is the T 1 that we found out and this is the T 2 that we found out. All right. Now, if we look at this equation all right, you will see that these two terms that is the first term and the second term they are actually quite different in the sense that one will increase with the increase with of the theta m and another will decrease with the increase in the theta term m. Okay. So, uh, for example, this is increasing, this term is increasing with the increase in the theta m and this term is decreasing with the increase in the theta m. So, therefore, an optimum value of theta m will always exist that gives the minimum period uh, T f that is the total time and hence a maximum theoretical feed rate because the theoretical feed rate or the overall feed rate will be defined by the time taken for the blade to come up that is time taken for the blade to complete a cycle. Cycle is going up and coming down including the uh, dwell time. It can be shown mathematically that this optimum value of theta m is a function only of the mu d and the r b by l. Okay. The maximum number of parts I just told also this that may be selected during each cycle that will be the small l is the length of the track divided by the capital L which is the length of the part. So, the small l by capital L this will be the maximum number of parts that may be selected during each cycle. In practice the average number of selected actually will be less than the small l by capital L because not all the time the part will actually uh, all the parts will be you know taking or nesting on the track meaning the track will not be filled up fully okay, during each of these cycle. So, therefore, uh, there is a concept of the efficiency of the uh, of the bowel feeder and that efficiency can be experimentally measured that is this bowel feeder any bowel feeder that you are you are selecting or designing it has to run for several times and see how many parts on an average is coming on the track. All right. Because as you as you understand that small l by capital L this is the maximum number of parts that is when the track is filled with the parts, but not all the time the track will be filled up and therefore, that efficiency it has to be multiplied by that efficiency. So, therefore, the mean feed rate f this will be equal to the n which is the frequency of the blade into the efficiency and the small l by capital L which is the maximum number of parts which is uh, coming on the in one cycle. Now, the blade frequency n this is given by 1 by T f. So, frequency is always 1 by time. So, this T f is the total time taken for the 
blade to go up coming down including the dwell time. In practice, the value of efficiency must be obtained from experiments. As I said that it has to run for some times and find out what is the average number of parts which are being taken in the cycles during the, uh, during the blade coming up and down. Let us take a numerical example. Say a center board hopper feeder has a blade length of 200 uh, millimeter. This is just an example, all right. Uh, uh, sorry, 260 millimeter, and it is designed to feed cylindrical parts end to end. The center of rotation is 250 millimeter from the lower end of the blade track. This is the pivot lower end. The inclination of the track when the blade is in this highest position is 45 degree, and the coefficient of sliding friction between the parts and the track is 0 0.3. Calculate the cycle time of the blade for the upward motion of the blade. We will I will remind you that for reaction between the track and the part to become 0, we will write that equation, the Newton's law, Newton's second equation that n minus m p g cos theta m, this is equal to m p acceleration and the length that is r b minus l by 2 or from here we are getting that the acceleration is g cos theta by r b. So, to lift the blade that is the time taken for going for the blade to go from the initial position to the utmost topmost position this will be given by T 1 which is 4 R B theta m divided by G cos theta m and this is will be root over if it is T 1 and similarly the T 2 dwell time it will be given by this that we have seen earlier. So, therefore, the total time taken is 2 T 1 plus T 2. I am reminding you that how we have derived the theoretical uh, formula. So, this is the total you know equation that is for the total cycle time. Now, here we are putting R b this will be equal to 260 plus 250 because going back here what we are saying is that the center board hopper feeder has a blade length of 260 blade length and from the lower point of the blade up to the pivot is 250. So, the entire R b will be 250 plus 260 okay. and the theta m has been given is given as 45 degree which is 0 0.785 radian, uh, g we had taken as a 9810 millimeter per second square acceleration due to gravity. The length of the track given is 260 millimeter this one and the mu d is 0 0.3 millimeter sorry 0 0.3. So, you put all these values here in this equation and we will find that this will be equal to 1.29 second. So, 1.29 second within 1.29 second the blade will accelerate, it will start decelerating, it will stop for some times, then again it will accelerate and decelerate and going back to the initial position. So, this time is the T f going up, dwell and coming down. So, this is in this example it takes 1.29 second. Hope it is clear. Now, the next hopper feeder, this is the reciprocating fork hopper feeder and if you see here the difference between the reciprocating fork, fork hopper feeder and the one that we have earlier seen that is the center board hopper feeder is that, that here the, uh, the fork which is reciprocating it is actually taking up the parts and this fork is it has a slot and this slot on this slot the headed parts will be hanging. So, this kind of reciprocating for hopper feeder they are actually suitable for feeding the headed parts like uh, you know the bolts for example or rivet with the heads for example. So, those heads will be hanging here because there is a slot in this and when it is coming through the mass of the part here and going up it will take up some of the parts and then here it will dwell for the parts to slide down this track and then this is the delivery chute when it is aligned with the delivery chute all the parts will be sliding from the uh, track to the delivery chute. Now, here for the purpose of the better uh, feeding the uh, bowl is rotated and it is also inclined at a certain angle with the vertical axis. Okay. This is to facilitate the parts to go to this uh, fork when it is reciprocating actually. 
analysis for maximum fourth inclination and the maximum rate of reciprocation this will be as you understand similar to that of the center board hopper feeder because here in this case what is happening is that this for from the initial position it will start accelerating okay and on the midway somewhere it will start decelerating and then it will stop for some times that is a dual period dual time then it will start accelerating and somewhere in the middle it will start decelerating and going back to the initial position so all these factors that we have considered in the center board hopper feeder that is the deceleration has to be limited because otherwise again the parts will be thrown out when the parts are located particularly at the topmost position of the uh, of the fork and for a certain deceleration we have to limit the track inclination angle because at a higher angle although the parts will be facilitated to be sliding from the track but it will take more time so the cycle time will be more and therefore the production rate will go down this is a new kind of hopper feeder which is different from uh, others that we have uh, discussed this is called the external gate hopper feeder and as the name says that external gate there is an external gate through which the parts will be falling so the design of this feeder is quite simple it has uh, uh, one this one as you can see in this drawing this is the stationary plate and on this stationary plate we have a stationary outer sleeve connected this is rigidly connected here and inside that there is a rotary inner sleeve this inner sleeve is rotating inside the stationary outer sleeve and uh, there is a gap between the rotating inner sleeve and the stationary outer sleeve and in the rotary inner sleeve there are slots cut like this in this uh, section it is shown so the parts are mass of the parts are located at the base of the rotating inner sleeve and when this is rotating the parts small engineering parts as we said cylindrical parts they will be nested in these grooves and when these grooves will be aligned with the external gate the parts will be falling one by one this is the idea so once again there is a stationary outer sleeve inside that there is a rotary sleeve which is rotating in the rotary sleeve there are grooves so the mass of the parts at the base of the rotary inner sleeve and the whole thing is inclined to the horizontal with a at a certain angle let's say here as it is shown in the figure and when this rotating inner sleeve will be rotating the parts will be nested in the grooves here and whenever during the rotation the groove will be aligned to the external gate the parts will be coming out of the gate one by one so this is the whole entire uh, you know uh, functioning of the external gate hopper feeder this is quite popular this is also used uh, in in industry for feeding the small parts small engineering parts to the assembly machine so here maximum feed rate is determined as a ratio of the velocity and the center line distance between the adjacent slot of the cylinder meaning that whatever we have the velocity here of the rotating inner sleeve that will be divided by the distance between the uh, sleeve okay in a distance between uh, inner adjacent slots and that will determine the maximum feed rate of the feeder let's take an let's see that how it is actually Uh, decided how it can be obtained now at a limiting velocity v velocity of the uh, the rotating inner disc at a limiting velocity v the part will neither fall through the gate nor pass over but will become jammed between the corner b and the c okay of the slot uh, and gate this is the slot and this is the gate through which it is coming out this is the external gate so if the velocity is certain velocity is at a particular velocity or it's a limiting velocity the part will neither fall nor it will actually um, go through so it will be actually clogged here okay it will be jammed between the corner b and c of the slot and the gate at any velocity below v the part will drop through the gate and if the velocity is more than the the limiting velocity by inertia the part will actually pass through the gate and it will not fall 
uh, in the in the gate. So the how we are getting the um, finally the the uh, uh, conveying velocity as we said by by dividing the uh, velocity with the center line distance that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.